So a video that kind of popped to my mind the other night was, I get a lot of people ask me questions about why I still ball my tungsten on um, an inverter machine. And I know, uh, you know, most, most inverter machines, they tell you not to ball your tungsten. Um, it, it's not necessary. And I thought I'd kind of go into explaining why I chose to do that and why it works for me. Um, when I first started welding with the inverter machine about five years ago, I, uh, you know, I did what it said. I sharpened my tungsten and I just, I was never happy with the way the tungsten held up. So, um, I started doing some testing, started talking to some people and trying to like pick people's brains on it. And basically, um, what I came up with was that, you know, the ball for me worked better on thicker material. So I do a lot of a quarter inch and to say half inch aluminum here at my um, home shop. And I, you know, I'd sharpen the tungsten basically, you know, like this. And I'd sharpen it and blunt the end of it. I'd start welding. Um, I'd run a higher frequency. Say I'd run, you know, 125 is normally my go to, 120. And after, you know, a couple passes at higher amperages, let's say 250 amps, um, the tungsten would just start growing nodules off the end of it. You'd start getting a little bit of a weird um, arc start and a weird um, erratic arc as you were welding. So, you know, I started noticing people on Instagram and YouTube and stuff that were going back to a ball. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try that. So I, you know, I figured, why not? And I, I balled some tungsten and I started welding with it. And I'm like, okay, this is normal to me um, based off of what I'm used to from running a transformer machine for all these years. So I came up with a little uh, test here I was gonna do. And basically what I've come up with is I have two pieces of laser CK 332nd tungsten. Um, that's kind of my go-to. And they're, they're brand new pieces, they've never been used. Um, the, way I, the way I've had them both prepped is I take the ends I, and I just taper the ends a wee little bit so they go into the torch a little easier. I think they're easier on your call it and call it body when you do that. And then on my prep, I've gotten a sharpened point with a just a blunt, I knocked the end off, just blunted it. And then on this one, I balled it like I normally would. Um, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. But I've just balled it like I normally would. And the way I ball it is, um, I just take the machine, I leave all the settings the same except my balance. I go all the way to um, EP, uh, as high as it'll go, and um, I just real, I'll take a piece of scrap aluminum, I start up on that scrap aluminum just nice and easy, real slow, and as soon as the ball forms that I like, um, then I back off of it easy, keep the gas on the tungsten, it, all, it always seems to work good. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to take, and I'm going to run four, uh, welds for you guys. One on this piece here with a bald tungsten at 250 amps. Um, we're going to keep all the settings the same on the machine. We're, the only thing we're going to change is the tungsten. So we're going to run 120 Hertz, 30% um, balance. So we're going to keep that all exactly the same. Um, with the bald tungsten. And then on this one, we're gonna run the blunted tungsten. We're gonna run all the settings exactly the same. And, you know, we're gonna see how the, the tungstens look when we're finished. That, if any of you guys see my video on that large watered air intercooler I built a few weeks ago, there's a lot of welding on that. I probably got six hours of welding, actual weld time on that. And I could almost weld that whole thing out, all the, the whole, thing with a 332 tungsten ball as long as i don't contaminate it which i do all the time but if i don't contaminate the tungsten and i can keep everything nice and clean i could weld that whole thing out and not have to reprep my tungsten to where if i would have run a sharpened tungsten blunted it seems like i'm constantly having to reprep it and i just i find that annoying some of the downfalls i have found to balling it 
is your arc starts aren't quite as good, but I don't think it, it, the machine still starts fine. You just get a little bit of a wandering arc before it comes on. And a lot of what I've learned is on this prime weld machine, it has a pretty low arc start amperage. I'm gonna say it's probably around 10 or 15 amps when it starts. And what I found with the pedal was if you just give it some more pedal, it'll snap and fire right up. Where with the sharpened tungsten, it, it does, it starts a little bit better, but the machine still starts fine every single time. It's not an issue with this machine. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna weld these out. We're gonna see how they, see how the tungstens look when we're finished up. So here's how I'm gonna set the machine to 260 amps. We're gonna leave it there. We're gonna put the AC frequency at 120. These knobs are very sensitive. And then we're gonna put the balance we're just gonna put it right at 30, just to make it simple. Everything else is off, no pulse, none of that. Post flow, I find eight seconds seems to keep my tungsten nice. And then pre-flow, I like to run a higher pre-flow, one to 1.2. And then as far as the gas is set up, right at about 18 CFH. And you know, it's for a later video, but I've found that just a standard number six for what I'm doing on quarter inch works really good. If I go down to 3 16 or eighth inch material, I will go to a number five cup. I like the cleaning zone a little bit better with the number five, but just a standard number six seems to work really good for me. So that's a CK20. That's how we're gonna do it for this video. So we got both pieces welded out. We got four welds on each piece. This is the one here that I ran out with the bald tungsten the whole time. And you can see it looks exactly like it did when I started welding. Nice and clean, nice and shiny, no issues there. The sharpened tungsten, you can see that it is no longer sharp. I'm gonna try to take some pictures of it, but it's got nodules coming off of it. It's kind of bald. <laughs> but you can see how it, it just blows the tip off of it. Now I know some people were going to say, well, why don't you just go up to eighth inch tungsten? I've tried that. 
and it, and it does help. But for my application here, what seems to work the best for me is 332 and bald. Now, if I go over 250, we did end up running that at 260 amps. But if I was to bump that up, say, another 10 amps, I probably would ball. I would probably use an eighth inch tungsten and I probably would still ball it. But you can see in that video how good the machine starts. It still welds good. There's no issues there. But I, I do feel that if you're okay with the tungsten doing that, it still welds fine, but it just doesn't, it, it just irritates me when that doesn't keep its shape. So I hope that helps somebody, someone. I'm no expert at this stuff. I'm just learning as I go. That's kind of my point here is, like I've said before, I've done a lot of stainless and carbon steel, about 20 years worth in the piping industry. So I've done a fair amount of aluminum on piping, but it's always been with transformer style machine, 532nd bulb tungsten and 350 amps and just letting it run. And a lot of times you're turning the balance all the way down on the end to get as much penetration as you can without the tungsten deteriorating and still coming apart on an old transformer. So I hope this helps someone. Anybody's got any questions or would like to see or has any other video ideas, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I will uh, see what we can come up with.